Hello and welcome. So with this video, we're continuing um, with the solo model and we're dealing with, uh, you know, application problems. So kind of like examples, oops, sorry, uh, examples. Uh, the specific example we're going to be dealing with, the shock that we're going to be dealing with, and then the transition dynamics thereafter is going to be a change in the savings rate. So we're going to have an increase and a decrease in the savings rate and see, see what happens. We'll look at the solo diagram to see the effect or what we expect to happen. Uh, and then we'll look at uh, time series graphs to think about you know the, uh, the effect, the transition dynamics through time. Cool. So let's get started. Well, uh, let's start off with the solo diagram. So, uh, you know, familiar solo diagram, you have an investment curve here in green, we have our break-even investment line in yellow, and then we have output per person here in red. Uh, and suppose we start off at the steady state value of capital per worker, K star, uh, again, where, um, you know, the investment line and the break-even line intersect, uh, which then defines our steady state value of output per worker. Great, so that's what we start off with. What happens if we change uh, savings? And then in particular, we're gonna go through two examples, but let's say the savings rate increases. So suppose the savings rate increases, what is the effect of that? Well, where do savings fit in? Savings fits in in the investment line, so this green line. Remember, uh, saving, uh, the investment line here uh, is just, it's, it's actually it's exactly this, it's output per person times the savings rate and the savings rate is some number between zero and one. It's the percentage of your income that uh, this economy saves. So it's some fraction. Uh, this line is basically this line, but some fraction of it, uh, timed by some scalar, which is the savings rate. So if the savings rate increases, then what we're gonna do is shift up this line um, by some amount. Uh, so I'll give me a moment and I'll do that right now. So we can see we have uh, our initial steady state level here. Uh, by the way, I'm using this Wolfram Alpha demonstration of the solo model. It's a free thing you can download and play with yourself. Um, so yeah, what happens when we increase the savings rate? Well, you can see that we're shifting up that investment line, which is right here, uh, which is pushing out the steady state level of the um, steady state level of the capital per worker. So looking at on a single static graph, we started off here. Uh, with a steady state value uh, k star sub naught, so that was our initial steady state value, uh, which, you know, there's the intersection here with our initial value of savings. So we're going to call our initial value of savings uh, s sub naught. Uh, and then by increasing savings, we're saying that we have a new savings rate, s sub one, that's greater. So here's our new savings line. And the new savings line uh, shifts up our investment line. So we have a new uh, intersection here. You know, nothing else changes. This break-even investment line doesn't change because uh, savings doesn't doesn't affect it. And then output per worker is unchanged since savings doesn't affect output per worker. So we have our new steady state value of capital per worker that we're going to call um, K star sub one. So it's a new star, it's a new K star, new steady state. Um, and to differentiate it from the initial one, we're going to have a little subscript sub one. Cool. Uh, and then, so uh, at this uh, value, the steady state value of capital per worker, we have this higher value of output per worker. Um, cool. So uh, we know that the uh, capital, the steady state value jumps up. We know that the steady state value of output per worker jumps up. But here's a question. Is that jump instantaneous or does it go through time? Uh, does it like slowly evolve through time? Well, uh, the value of the steady state definitely jumps up because the steady state is just a function of, you know, it's the capital value at this intersection. But remember, the law of motion capital is defined by this, this equation right here, this capital accumulation equation. And it's something that, that happens dynamically through time, gradually through time, right? So if we, if we were to be starting off at this value of capital worker, but our steady state is way up here, well, you have this process where this is investment, this is break-even investment, so capital is going to increase in the first period by the difference between the two as it slowly moves over. Um, so the process is going to be kind of like a gradual, slow one if we were to look at it in a time series graph. Uh, and then you'll have a similar story with output per worker because output per worker is just a function of the current capital per worker stock. Um, so it's going to evolve through time as the capital stock evolves through time. So let's have a look at that first uh, in time series graph. Uh, and here we are. So these are all per capita levels. This is uh, capital per worker, and this is output per worker. This little dotted line here is where I instigate a new higher savings rate. 
So before we were at that initial steady state level, k star sub 1, which is this, this level right here that I'm pointing at, uh, and then the moment this savings rate kicks in, we have a new higher level uh, steady state value for our capital per worker. So this level right here is equal to uh, k star sub 1. Right, so we have an initial, we have an instant jump in the steady state, but the capital accumulation equation, right, is a gradual equation. So early on, we have big moves in capital per worker, uh, and then as the capital per worker stock approaches the steady state, the moves become smaller and smaller and smaller. And then since output per worker is just a function of capital per worker, you have basically the same dynamics uh, describing it. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, you have a similar picture for the aggregate values, right? So aggregate capital, aggregate output very similar picture where you had one steady state here you have a new steady state up here uh, what's kind of interesting actually uh, I find fascinating is consumption per worker and investment per worker so have a look at this right well first off what is consumption per worker what is the equation that defines that well consumption is related to investment so uh, with aggregate output uh, and income so the economy produces a certain amount that we call Y, so that's output or income. Uh, there's two things that people can do uh, in this world, in this economy. They can consume things. When they consume things, they consume it, and it's destroyed. That good's gone. But they do get some benefit from it, right? So consumption is our closest proxy for welfare in this economy. Uh, and the other option is to save it or invest it. So what determines uh, investing, investment? Well, investment is just the savings rate times aggregate output, right? Uh, which implies that consumption is just one minus the savings rate times aggregate output. Uh, and then similar in terms of if we're thinking about individual workers in this economy, the per capita consumption is one minus the savings rate times the um, output per worker, and then investment is just the savings rate times output per worker. So what happens to these two variables as we change the savings rate? Well, it's consumption and investment is just a function of output per worker and the savings rate. So remember, we had we were at the steady state value of output per worker, the initial steady state value. The savings rate jumps up positively. Since there's a negative sign in front of it, we expect consumption to instantaneously jump down because this number was some small number before, and then it's some larger number after that. So if we were to look at the time series graph, you see that that's the initial drop in consumption per worker. Similarly, similarly, remember investment is just the savings rate times up per person. So if the savings rate jumps up, uh, one period. That's what we see right here. Okay, so that's the first jump. That's the first move, right? Because S changed and therefore consumption changed and investment changed. Uh, but what about after that, right? So after that, it just follows the process, follows the evolution of output per worker. Since output per worker, uh, this graph right here, it went from a lower steady state value to a new higher steady state value and then evolved slowly through time with that capital accumulation equation. We see the same process here, so this is investment per worker. So it jumps up here and then evolves slowly here because investment per worker is just this value, output per worker times the savings rate. What's interesting now is when we think about consumption per worker, right? So you see that initial drop and then it happened to be the case that consumption per worker went through the initial steady state value of consumption per worker and now is at a higher path, right? So this increase in the savings rate uh, led to consumption per worker to be on a higher path. So it seems that, that it might suggest, as is the case for all these other things, that higher savings results in higher consumption. But that's not the case. We could actually set up a situation. I mean, just think about it pragmatically, right? Uh, suppose you increase your savings rate all the way to 99%, right? If you save 99% of your income, um, you only have 1% to consume it. So you'd expect your consumption to be pretty small if you were saving 99%. So you can see there's some optimal value of savings. What is that optimal value of savings? Well, we get into the details of that with the, when we talk about the golden, le golden rule level of uh, consumption. Uh, it's actually a savings rate that leads to that golden rule. Um, and there are some situations where you increase the savings rate and you have result in higher consumption, but there are all other situations, which I'll do in a second, where you increase the savings rate uh, uh, and you actually reduce consumption. So that's crazy. But what we do know, because we had that solo diagram, right? We definitely know that capital per worker 
is going to increase if we increase the savings rate. So capital for worker, as we increase the savings rate, capital, the steady state value of capital for worker is definitely going up. But uh, I want to make this really clear. Check us out, right? So here's our initial investment line. Uh, so consumption is the difference between output up in the red and the consumption, um, sorry, output up there and investment. So this difference here from this point to this point is consumption. And then in my little diagram, I increase the savings rate up to this point, right? And now you see that consumption, it's the difference between output per person and investment per person. So consumption is now here. So this line here, the segment is definitely shorter than this one. So in the way I drew it on the diagram, consumption actually decreased in that particular example. So the point mainly is, is that it all depends on the like parameterization of your model and like what your starting point savings rate was and your ending point savings rate. So if you wanted to look at a time series of how this would work where an increase in the savings rate results in a reduction in consumption, I'll show it to you right now. So here it is, um, you know, the capital aggregate output look all very, very similar. Um, here's capital per worker, output per worker, all very similar, right? You are at an initial steady state value down here, you're at a now at a higher steady state up here, but what about consumption? So the idea is that the drop in consumption uh, because of the higher savings rate is much larger than the increase to the new steady state value. So you can see consumption drops quite a bit because of the increase in the savings rate. Um, and then as it slowly increases up to that new steady state value of capital per worker, it doesn't increase enough to take us to a higher level. So we'll cover this in a bit more detail um, when I go to the golden rule level of capital. Golden rule level of consumption. Great, so hopefully this is helpful. If you did find it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, thanks and have a good day.